Hello everyone, this is class four of level design and game architecture. This week we're going to be talking about basic game design spaces, game spaces. From the syllabus, um, the reading for this week recommended is Pattern Language for Game Design, Chapter 10, which is on boss encounter pattern patterns. Your primary reading, uh, which is required, is an architectural approach to level design, Chapter 4, talking about basic game spaces. There will also be a boss encounter design article, which is linked here in the slides and also in the syllabus. And you'll need to pick one pattern from a pattern language um, and comment on how that applies to uh, games. Lecture topics today are going to be on micro locations, game beats, and on encounter design. And then uh, our class activity uh, during class on either Monday or Wednesday is going to be lecture exercises uh, 7 to 10. And then we will do the boss encounter pattern 11. Your project this week is going to be to design a boss encounter that creates a specific player experience using a pattern from uh, exercise 11. Uh, boss encounter exercise 11, I think I just said 10. In any case, um, and then you're going to try to implement your uh, scene design in the editor. So, micro locations. What do I mean by micro locations? I mean small locations where a particular gameplay moment can happen. Uh, for example, uh, in Journey, the whole world, all of the different biomes that you move through or the meta location, the desert that you start out in would be a macro location. And then the top of the sand dune where you first see the mountain that's your final destination, that would be a micro location. So in some sense, you could construct an entire game out of awesome micro locations. But if you didn't think about the macro and meta locations first, you might end up in creating uh, you know, a bunch of really powerful, cool moments, but they're gonna be scattered and unfocused and they're not going to have as powerful an effect as if you were able to, um, to order them intentionally to create an overall story, uh, give them context. So game beats, what do I mean by game beats? Um, well, in music, you have musical beats, right? Um, they're the rhythm of the music, the notes that have emphasis uh, in a musical composition, the things that move the structure and the, um, and the emotion of the music along. Um, there are story beats, right? So in narrative, those are the things that happen that move the plot forward. Uh, examples of narrative beats are going to be the events, uh, each of the events in the hero's journey, right? So like any, event that happens that has significance to the story is a story beat. So game beats um, are the things that move a game along. But games have a lot of different parts, right? Their games have mechanics, games often have spatial elements, um, they often have you know, temporal elements that structure them into an order, they have narrative elements just as stories do, you know, they have musical elements just as music does. So creating game beats um, probably or usually makes use of several to all of the other kind of beats to create particular uh, moments of uh, movement in the user experience and move it along. Um, so what are some examples of game beats? A boss fight might be an example. A mini boss might be an example, right? Smaller beat. Um, platforming challenges in a game would be a story beat. You know, they stop your run and gun and now I'm doing some platforming um, or, or whatever the, the change is. Um, Puzzle mini games might be a story beat. Dungeons in a larger open world. Uh, Cutscenes might be story beats. Quiet open areas where nothing happens, sort of negative space, right? Um, those can be really important and powerful, give you a moment to reflect. Um, ambushes would be story beats. NPC conversations are story beats. Returning to town after a battle. Uh, the loading screens might punctuate the story and be story beats. So everything in a story, actually, kind of, yes, but, None of those things by themselves are game beats, right? In isolation, they're just noise. In isolation, me hitting a snare drum is just noise. Uh, the note of a trumpet isn't a, a musical beat, it's just noise. Um, in, you know, in a story, something that happens is just an event, it's not a, a story beat, unless it's in context. So it's structuring these elements of design into an overall flow, um, a coherent overall flow of gameplay, and that allows them to become beats within that flow. So it's not just the things that happen in games are game beats, it's the things that happen in the context of, game, of the game that they're in are beats in, in that game's uh, narrative or gameplay flow. Cool.
All right, so encounter design. Um, what do we mean by encounter design, right? Like what constitutes an encounter in a game um, and how do we structure and put that together? So an encounter is a player action in relation to game space and in relation to an interactable element of the game. Um, so that might be enemies, right? So a fight might be an encounter. It might be NPCs, a conversation that you have with a shopkeeper or you know, someone you meet in, in the wilderness. Um, might be an encounter. Um, puzzles might be an encounter. If you look at the game The Witness, each time you come up to a puzzle, right, well, as you're wandering around the world, that's an encounter. Um, that game puts encounters into the context of the game world um, and, and an overall story that you're going through. Talos Principle does that, The Room does that. So puzzles are, are quite often encounters. Um, encounters can be both uh, game beats within a level or within an overall game. You know, each encounter being a different beat in the, in the structure of the game. But they can also have game beats within them, right? Encounters can be complicated. A boss fight can have a bunch of different phases. Um, you know, the encounter of the goblins outside of town, you know, could have the beat of, like, being ambushed by the goblins. And then, you know, the beat of almost being, you know, killed and uh, starting to run away. And then the beat of, you know, the bridge collapsing right after you get across it and the, the goblins falling and you being safe. So one encounter, but it can have multiple parts, multiple different beats within it. So um, think about how that relates to uh, macro and micro locations within a game. Um, so this is really just talking about encounters within relationship um, to story beats and to micro and macro locations. There are a lot of dis different aspects of encounter design. Um, and those sort of go beyond the scope of, of what we're going to talk about here. This is more structural and how it relates to level design. So um, encounter design bosses. So special case of encounter design. Um, I have an article for you to read, which I mentioned earlier, um, on uh, boss encounter design. Um, this is just a special case of encounter design, but I think it's a good one to take some time to look at and to get into some of those specifics. Um, because boss encounters are sort of the most complicated kind of encounter you're going to run across, usually. Um, and so they're a good place to look at all of the, the moving parts that encounters can have. So here's a link to the, uh, the boss article. Um, pause the video and copy it down if you, for whatever reason, can't click on the slides. Uh, but you should have access to the slides. Uh, they are also linked in Canvas uh, in order to get, uh, get to that article. Um, so you're going to probably, you're going to want to make sure you read this article absolutely before class next week because we're going to be doing a uh, pattern exercise involving boss encounter design. So this is going to give you some grounding for that. Um, all right. And then now we'll go on to the rest of the class. I'm going to step through it really quickly this week because there's a gotcha and I want to make sure that you're prepared for that. So um, we're going to talk about the reading. Um, There'll be more detail on this slide uh, when, when the week comes, uh, but you should be prepared to talk about some aspect of one of the readings or more. Um, the, as you can see, there's a lot of different things uh, in terms of spatial elements that I, or spatial arrangements that I wanna talk about. Um, and uh, we'll be doing an exercise on micro and macro circulation patterns. Um, you can take a look at that. Uh, be prepared, it's gonna happen in class. We're going to do an exercise on meta, uh, macro, and micro locations. Um, so all of the things that I mentioned in the lecture, there are going to be little exercises that go along with them. Why the uh, lecture is so short, because it's going to take up class time to do these things. Uh, we're going to do an exercise on game beats, uh, looking at games that, the game level that you've played and the beats inside of it, um, diagramming that out or listing that out. Uh, we are going to do an exercise on encounters in games. You're going to pick a game and you're going to describe some elements of it. Um, all of these are going to be pretty rapid fire in class. Um, I don't, I'm not looking for long uh, answers. I'm just looking for you, know, you to, be, to go through the process of thinking about each of these things. And finally, we're going to do the uh, boss encounter pattern. You'll have an hour to do that, and you're going to work with your group to do it. Um, you want to do a really good job at framing it because, and here's the gotcha, you're then going to trade patterns with the other people in, or with a different group. And your pattern, or your um, your project for this week is going to actually be to um, to build a scene uh, based on their boss encounter pattern, not yours. 
So you want to make sure you do a really good job with your pattern this week. Um, finally, there'll be uh, a challenge to integrate um, meta and macro level patterns, the patterns you've created so far, um, to link those to other patterns in the class. That's a challenge. It's not required. Um, you'll do some of this later in the class, but if you do this now, you'll get extra credit. So if you're worried about your grade, this is a good thing to do that's not too complicated, just finding those links. So a lot of looking around, not a lot of writing. Um, and then lastly, the assignment for, for this coming week is going to be to write a paragraph in response to each of the readings, to uh, finish those exercises that we mentioned, and write up your pattern from exercise 11 in the pattern library um, so that the group that it's assigned to can use it. We'll get that done as soon as possible during the week. Um, and then your project, again, will be to use the pattern you were given by your group to design a boss encounter that creates the player experience that, uh, that it describes and then to at least gray box out that space and then takes place in um, and mark up your screenshots and so on using the, or describing the techniques that you use. Um, try to texture light and add mechanics to your scene if you can. Um, you know, the texturing and lighting, definitely uh, try that, attempt it. Um, and then in terms of the implementing mechanics, see what you can do. Again, using pre-constructed mechanics in this case is fine what you need to be doing in an original way is setting up the overall scene. Um, all right, so short lecture this week, and um, I'll get this posted now to you as quickly as possible, and I look forward to seeing you in class.